Hi, I'm Doug Nelson, and thank you for your interest in the range of motion cervical inclinometer. To use it, the inclinometer is really wonderful to be used for different ranges of cervical motion. We're going to start first with flexion extension. So as you see here, you want this person standing in a neutral position. It's very important that the inclinometer be at centered at zero. If you, uh, if you set it down, it's important to just kind of let it zero itself. The other thing that's important, when the person goes into flexion, for instance, as their head moves forward, it's very important to just keep your hand in contact with the head, and then you can read the number. In this case, Marsha is moving forward at 50 degrees. So, Marsha, when you come back. So what happens, if the person moves too quickly, go ahead and do that. If you let this thing slide, obviously you're going to get an errant number. So part of the trick with this is anchoring the inclinometer in, on their head and then also kind of following their head forward without influencing it. So uh, that's an important little distinction. Don't push them forward, but make sure that the inclinometer does not move uh, in relationship to their head so it stays in the same place so that you'll, you'll get a more accurate reading. If indeed the needle, uh, if you have it leaned one way or the other, then the needle will tend to stick just a little bit. So make sure you get it at a neutral point and have it straight vertical. Uh, also, now we'll do extension. So Marsha will go back. I'll just follow her backwards. And she's now at 60 degrees of cervical extension. So optimal for that is uh, 75 degrees. Optimal inflection is about 40 degrees it's in that ballpark. Now, Marcia, if you would turn this way, and now also to do lateral flexion, same thing. Hold on just for one second, Marcia. So when you laterally flex, here we go. When you laterally flex, the person will flex, in this case, to the right. Follow the inclinometer over. She's at 50 degrees, but also keep an eye on their shoulders so we keep the shoulders level. Then go back to neutral again. That's it. There we go. Look at the center again. That's it. There we go. And then go to the left. That's it. There we go. And she's a little less. Let's come back to zero again. Go to the left again, Marsha. Yeah. So she's at about 35 degrees going to the left. So now, to do uh, cervical rotation, the way you do that, again, the inclinometer will fit right across the forehead. It's all the same principles. Uh, when the person rotates to the right, just follow the numbers and read the numbers. The only thing that makes it difficult in this case, Marsha's doing 80 uh, degrees of rotation. The only thing that's difficult is, again, when the person rotates, for instance, to the left, okay, so that's 80 degrees of rotation. Just make sure that they're doing pure rotation, that they're not also doing lateral flexion, or in some cases people will do a little forward flexion. Just make sure that the rotation is pure. But in terms of using the inclinometer, it's quite easy. All you have to do is just set it on the forehead, have them turn, make sure it's pure rotation, and just read the number. It's a very easy and very quick way to measure range of motion. What you want is speed and accuracy. The quicker it is and the more accurate it is, the more likely you are to actually measure multiple times during a session to see what's helping to change the range of motion and what's not.